Hey guys, this is Tim from Twice Circles, and welcome to the second video in this little mini series on the new expansion for Mega Aquarium, Freshwater Frenzy. If you missed the last one, put a little link in the corner for you. Uh, that was all about the basics of the new expansion, some of the new mechanics that are in play, some of the new care requirements of the animals that are in this expansion. And I did promise that this video would be about breeding. Now I know a lot of you guys are very excited about that, so we're going to jump back into this aquarium that we built last time, and I'm going to show you uh, all the different types of breeding. So we're going to start with what I think is the probably the simplest. So we've got the most basic egg depositors, okay? Um, so what that means is these guys, they normally need a flat surface, sometimes a vertical surface, which they deposit their eggs on. And uh, they deposit their eggs, and then you just got to look after the eggs until they hatch, and and that's your, your work done. Uh, so the one we're going to do is... Which one should we do? We've got a choice, actually. We could do the convict cichlids or we could do the midas cichlids is there a reason i would choose a different one i think we'll do the convicts the convicts are actually the first thing you get to breed in the game i think they're a really good introduction i'm actually going to build a special breeding tank uh you don't have to do this um it does depend on what you're trying to achieve this is good if you just want to do a couple and you want to have maximum survival rates although alternatively it does depend on the animal to a certain extent. You could go for a sort of more mass breeding uh, project, but you, you might have a few more um, losses. So, using a lot of these combis, I mean, this is massive, this is overkill. You know what, let's just, let's just go like this, because we're only gonna have a few fish in here. And what we're going to do is we're gonna just pick up two at random, two convicts from our existing tank. We're gonna make this little breeding tank. Uh, it's close enough to the blood worm, that's fine. And now let's have a little look at what these guys need, because I have now enabled breeding. In the last video, I had breeding disabled just to keep it simple. But it means that all of the animals that ha that are breedable have this little heart icon on them. And in fact, let's just take a look at the rest of the animals, just for a little intro. I mean, you can see a lot of heart icons. Uh, in fact, out of the ones we have available, all but two of these are breedable um that's quite incredible one two three four five six seven out of the nine we have available are breedable now uh one thing i will just clear up now is that by breedable uh here i am talking about they will reproduce in your aquarium they will basically produce little copies of themselves there is a different thing which i i call hybridization which is when uh, you can get different colors and different patterns and only three species can do that we'll take a look at one of them later that's uh, the guppy here but we're starting off with something which when i say breedable or just you know almost like a basic breeder that just means that they can reproduce in your aquarium so let's hover over the in fact no, let's do it in the build menu because you get a bit more information up front so these are the steps that we're going to have to take to get this little guy to breed so they have to be fully grown, they're already fully grown, they're going to have to find a suitable mate, they're going to have to breed in a suitable location, in this case it's a flat surface, which is a new aquascaping requirement in the expansion, and they will have to, uh, the fry, once they've hatched, will eat bloodworm, which is the same as the parents, nice and easy, but they will also need a little cave. So, at the moment they are just looking for a mate, now the more mates, potential mates in the tanks, and the more of the same species, the quicker this will happen. So, you know what we should do, actually? Let's just put a couple more. Oh, I just picked up a tinfoil barb. Um, actually, you know what? We're going to be really clever here. We're going to put all of these guys in here. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> so these guys, because they've been together, some of them have actually already paired. So, in fact, we can speed things along a little bit and actually find out which ones of these have already paired with each other. So... You can actually see here that Convict 7 is already paired with Convict 6. They found a mate. So we can actually skip that first little step. And we might as well do that because I want to just speed these things on a little bit. In fact, let's leave those in the tank. And let's take 2, 4, and 5 and put these back in here. And I did just notice these guys aren't especially happy because they, they're they not meeting their shoal requirements. I'm just going to add one more. Okay, so... Normally what we would have had to do there is wait a couple of days for those guys to pair, but we didn't have to do that because they've already paired, which is great. So now what we can do is just they need to find a flat surface to breed. So we're going to add something that provides that. So if we go to the freshwater tab, although this actually is also compatible with saltwater, 
Uh, this provides some rock, so it's another type of rock you can use for all sorts of reasons, but it gives you a flat surface. So we're going to plonk that in. And now these guys, you can see it's updated. Now they're looking for a flat surface to breed. Uh, there are two currently available, and when they do deposit their eggs, it will occupy this surface. So the more that you want to breed in the same tank, the more of these you will need. Uh, it's a 27% chance, you know, we, I think actually just to speed thing, things along, I'm just going to add another one. 41%, 55 okay. I think, I think that's good. I'm going to put it up, speed it up because I want to show you all three types of breeding today. So I'm not going to do too much, you know, worrying about building my aquarium. I'm really just want to demonstrate these, this cool new feature to you guys. And the, you know, the basic requirement is of course you do have to keep all of their, their regular requirements fulfilled. So you have to feed them, you have to make sure that their temperature is taken care of and their, their water quality, of course. Fingers crossed we get it on the first time. Hey, hey, always lucky. So this animal bred recently. It'll be able to breed again in 10 days, and that'll apply to both of them because they've, they've both bred together. And what we have here is our first spawn. So let's let's clear up these other things because we don't really need to worry about the rest of those guys right now. Uh, and you can actually see our little spawn uh, just here. Um, that's where they've deposited their, their little guys. And if you look at the spawn itself, it, this is a sort of interesting new thing that we've got in the game. It's like, this is like multiple animals in one object. And it actually has the potential to grow into 14 little babies, 14 little cichlids. But you can see here that they have a survival rate. And it's just just natural. Uh, naturally, what will happen uh, is that you will, you will lose some of these some of these eggs. And um, but you can do certain things to maximize that survival rate. So cichlids are very protective of their children. And so they, uh, they, we can actually leave those in here and they, they won't you know, do any harm to these babies. Although interestingly, if we actually add a, an animal which isn't the parent, uh, you can actually see, this is the predation icon. Uh, this is on all of all eggs and fry. fry. If I call things fry, that means baby fish. Um, and you can see that there's a predator present, and that's basically that extra convict cichlid that we added would actually try and eat these eggs. Uh, but but convict cichlids, what, that, the reason they're one of the easier things to breed is that they're very protective of their eggs. And actually, you can see that if the parent is present, it actually protects them from that predation. So we could actually leave this guy in here, and that'd be fine. But I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to leave these guys on their own. Let's remove five, put it back where it was. Uh, and actually, we've got nothing to worry about here. The, there is nothing reducing the survival chance, so we can just let it keep going. And in a few days, these guys will hatch into convict cichlid fry. You can see that in that tooltip just there. And I will skip forward in a moment, but... I just want to show you one more day and I want to show you what happens at the end of the day because we've got the survival rate of 70%. You can see we've got 14 babies. And so overnight we did lose four little eggs unfortunately uh, and that's just because of that 70%. But we have made it through a day and this day counter will always increase. So it's a bit different to normal animals which will only grow if all of their requirements are met. This day counter will always go forward but it's what it's about is can you maximize that survival chance over the course of the time? So I'm now just going to jump forward uh, in the video until these guys hatch into little baby fry. Okay, so we're about to hatch these guys. We're about to turn to the next day. There we go. Okay, so let's just pause for a second. Now, these guys have turned into fry, um, and you can actually see them, these cool little... This cool animation for the fry. It's a little baby fish. And that actually means that their care requirements have changed. Firstly, they now need to be fed. The eggs don't need to eat, but these guys do. Uh, luckily, they eat the same as the parents. Um, and we currently have an issue because there's, there's no cave. These guys like to hang out in a cave. So if I'd built a few too many flat surfaces, I would actually have to obviously get rid of some of those now to make space for the cave. But there is space here, luckily. Uh, and we can see that these guys also appreciate some good water quality. So... You can actually increase the water quality to maximize their, their survival rate. Uh, so now you can speed things along again. And now it's all about waiting for those last few days and eventually they will hatch. So let's <laughs> let's skip forward in the video again. And uh, you know what? For the next video, I'm going to get this, uh, this beach tank.
but uh, won't be showing you that today. Okay, let's skip forward. Okay, you join me just before these guys are about to hatch. It's four o'clock on the last day. We currently have two remaining babies with a 72% survival chance, which means we're guaranteed to get one, but we've actually got a chance of getting two here. So let's see what happens. Let's open up the tank. The parents are still there. They're fine. And we got two. Pretty cool. So we've got this one. It's a, you can see it's converted. This is the fry window turned into this one. But we actually got not only just number 10, we also got number 9. Both of these hatched from that same set of fry. So we just, you know, we just made two extra cichlids, two extra fish. Uh, and if we wanted to now, we could turn this into a new new tank and uh, generate a bit of extra prestige. And don't worry about the idea of, you know, having the same fish in multiple tanks. Something that I have talked about before, but, you know, just in case anybody's not clear on, on how prestige works, there's a, there's a percentage chance each time you generate prestige. And therefore, even if you have it in one tank, you know, there's a 31% chance here that someone won't enjoy it and therefore it's worth having a second tank and although the you know the return on investment will go down hey if you've got those fish for free because you've bred them you know it's still worth doing so that's it for the egg depositors for now the next one i want to look at is the egg scatterers and i think the simplest thing to do here is i'm going to remove these decorations these flat surfaces to stop them breeding but i'm just going to leave this tank here and uh, now i'm going to build another one and I think I'll just build it right next door, actually. And as I say, there's different ways of doing this. In fact, I've got a slightly new idea. What I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to breed these cave, blind cave tetras in here. Because these are the first egg scatterer. And... I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sell these. Oh, these, these Midas cichlids are all grown up, so it'd be a shame to sell them. Um, can I put them in my guppies? No, because they're bully. I'm just going to sell these two Midas cichlids uh, so that they're just on their own. It's a bit simpler to see what's going on. Uh, and we're just going to breed these guys in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. The egg scatterers are a little bit different in that you can't just breed a pair of them. They need a certain number to... To get them to breed in the first place because the way these guys work is that they form a spawning group and then they all just release their genetic material into the water and you kind of see what happens it's you know they don't actually like pair up individually so we've got these guys here and they're almost able to breed but they actually just need one more animal so what we're going to do is we're going to add one more blind cave tetra to the tank and now we just have to wait it's a 30 percent chance of them breeding each day and let's see when that happens um, I think once again I'm going to skip forward until the end of the day and we will uh, hopefully get some egg scatterer spawn okay so we've got some spawn took a few days but we got there so you can see here that these guys they all breed in one go as I said so we've got two lots of spawn all in one go and we're going to just pause because these guys are a little bit different. Because they're egg scatterers, they don't really know whose babies are whose. So, to be honest, they don't really, they're not that picky about uh, whether they eat their own kids. Uh, let's gloss over that. Basically, the predation is going to be more of an issue with these guys, and it normally will be with egg scatterers. So, you can always leave them in there. In fact, we would probably do fine with, uh, you know, with egg scatterers, you get a lot of babies. So, these guys were talking 21 babies. Um, 21 babies, 65% chance, and that's been reduced slightly by predation. Um, and in fact, yeah, I think what we could do here is we could move out the parents, or we could move out the eggs, and if you're trying to maximize your survival rate, you could do that. But I think actually, you know, with only five animals in the tank, we can just leave them in there. And it's sort of simpler doing it like that, because, you know, they these guys require caves. Uh, they like to be... Uh, in caves for protection and so um if we built a new tank for them we would have to you know put all the aquascaping requirements in and that sort of stuff so it's it's easier to leave them in there but you'll tend to get lower returns so it sort of depends whether you're trying to do a you know a big breeding program where you're trying to maximize the amount you generate per day or whether you're just sort of doing it as a background thing so once again i'm just going to jump forward and let's see how many of these babies survive Okay, so you join me just before these guys are going to finally pop. So they, just like the other ones, they 
first they go from eggs to fry and uh, then you have to start feeding them and now we're on the final day we have a decent chance here we've got one baby remaining on this ball and we've got two here and a 64% chance so there's a good chance of this one surviving we've got a guaranteed one here and then possibly a second let's see how we do so we've started off with five in the tank how many will we get and we've got eight we all three of those survived we were really lucky wow that's incredible and so now we've got up to to eight here and you know if i leave these guys to it they will breed again and you know with with 60 space in the tank there's quite a lot of space that they could they could keep uh, filling up however you will note that each time this happens there are going to be more predators around and therefore the survival rates will be a little bit lower um but it does show that you can just you know once you set up a breeding thing with some of the fish you can let them go some of them are much more picky and honestly you'll, you'll struggle to get them to survive unless you move into their own tank and stuff like that um, but that's just part of the game isn't it so let's move on to the final type of breeder which is the live bearer and, and also the hybrid uh, and that's the guppy okay so the live bearer they get pregnant and then the uh the pregnant fish carries the baby for a little while and then eventually it comes out and just like us it comes out alive so you know like when i say us humans and it'll come out straight as fry so we will skip that egg stage and i think again the simplest way of doing this is i'm going to find two which are paired up and then i'm going to move them onto their own um just because i you know i want to be able to focus in on them and it not get too hectic Again, I don't really need a tank this big. You know what, we'll try. Let's try a couple at a time. Let's do a couple of pairs at a time. And actually, this will work really well because it also means we'll be able to move the parents out of the tank and we can maximise the survival chance. So what I've done there is I've just used a pump to connect this. This is super helpful when you're doing lots of separate tanks and things, being able to connect things. Um, let's do a little bit of a refactor on our gonna move that so we, they can still walk around the back um just to do a little tweak so we don't have quite as many filters in fact let's do the same over here maybe we didn't have much money before we've got tons of money because i've just been letting the game run i mean look we're on day 32 obviously normally you just keep building your aquarium do it during this so i'm not suggesting that you should play the way i'm playing here and just you know skip forward waiting for a few babies to hatch but i just don't want to overwhelm the viewer with too much of stuff going on in fact, this is a good opportunity to show you the all-new Animal Ledger. Okay, so the ledger shows all of the animals that are in the game. This feature will be coming to the base game too. Do not worry if you're not planning on buying the expansion on release day. You will still have access to this. So this ledger just makes it a lot easier to see what's going on in your aquarium. It lists all of the tanks, all of the animals. You can bring them up with a click. And also you can filter by problems and also by breeding. Uh, so this will just show all of your eggs, all of your fry, all of your breeders and what they might need. And you can either filter by tanks or animals. So if you switch to the animal one, then it just shows all of the animals. In fact, we can see, you know, whether these guys have been fed. And if any of these needed to grow up, it would show you how close they were to growing up. And we've got a problems. Currently we've got no problems. So any, th let me show you a quick example, actually. So if we pick up this. So the water quality is no longer sufficient for some of the animals in the tank. They just appear in the problems. And on the tank view, it will also show you them here. Put that back and then they're gone. And then we can go to breeding. Now this will show, like I say, anything that can breed, anything that's a fry or a spawn. Wait, egg or a fry. And what's useful about this is we've got all these guppies and we can actually see which ones are paired with which. So here we have guppy one who is paired with guppy eight. So we're gonna pick up guppy eight by right clicking here. And we're gonna pick up guppy one, put those two here. And then we've got guppy nine who is paired with guppy four. Put these guys here. Oh, we do actually have a slight problem with uh, shoaling. So let's, let's get another couple who are paired. I mean, we might as well. No, you'll see why I want to do it in a separate tank in a moment. This guy's guppy two. Okay, and then these guys, we've left two, three here, and I'm just going to get rid of one of them so that they can sit as a pair, because guppies like to be either one, two, or four or more. Uh, and these guys are all craving a little bit of foliage, some, some plants, but actually, if we look at them individually, you can see that to breed, well, if we look in the menu, 
these guys are going to require floating cover. You don't normally get floating cover until quite late in the game. Uh, in fact, I think, yeah, this is when you get it rank 7, which is a lot later than when you get the guppies. So you can't actually hybridize them straight away. Um, and basically, this floating cover just makes them feel calmer and makes them happy to breed. So these guys are now in that same spot like the convict cichlids that we started with. We now need to wait for them to actually breed. Let's give them plenty of floating cover so that they've got the best chance of breeding each day. So 80% chance, that's wonderful. And we can even keep this animal ledger up. And if we scroll to the top, we'll, we should see if any new things appear. Ah, however, the live bearers, of course, they get pregnant before they spawn any, uh, any fry. So what we'll look for is some icons here to tell us if any of these guys have got pregnant. And I'm actually just going to rename this tank um, Fry Tank. Actually, Guppy Fry, let's call it. And this one we're going to call Adult Guppy Tank. Which you'll see. Oh, I've called this a Gry Tank. Smart. Okay. So. You can see some icons have appeared, so that little egg icon there means this guy is pregnant, and this one is also pregnant, and then we have this one is the male who is has just got someone else pregnant and is so is now looking for another mate. Because that's what guppies are like. Have you ever heard the phrase breeding like guppies? Okay, so the next step is to wait for these guys to give birth to their live young, which will take a couple of days, so I'll hop back in a moment. Okay, so we've just got a load of guppies have spawned. In fact, we've also got some more blind tetra spawn, but we're not going to worry about those guys. And so we have our first two guppy fry have appeared in this tank. Now we're going to pause. So these guys are suffering from predation. And again, I could, I could leave it like this and it would be fine and some would survive. But because we're looking to hybridize these guys, I'm going to try and maximize their survival chances so we get as many chances of creating a new color or pattern. So... What I'm actually going to do is I'm now going to lift out all but the pregnant ones and put them back in the adult tank. And so we've just got the this one in the guppy fry tank, this one in the guppy fry tank, and all the rest. Uh, oh, actually, wait, these guys. Are these pregnant? We don't actually have enough now. I, don't, I think they're pregnant because it would say here. Ah, this is something we've got to worry about. They actually get stressed if they're not in the right numbers. I th anyway, I think it's fine. So what we'll do is we'll take out the non-pregnant ones. I must have messed up a couple of them. Okay, so yeah, these guys are fine because they're in a pair. So they're happy. They're pregnant. They're going to pop in a couple of days. This one in one day. This is going to reduce the predation in this tank to a very low number. A number that I'm quite comfortable with. So let's speed it up. Let's go for this mega filter. That's actually a new filter that's only available um, with the expansion, partly because you don't really need it in the base game. You might as well go for a double filter, um, but because you can't use skimmers in freshwater tanks, it's it's more required. Okay, so I am just going to wait. Uh, well, actually, no, four days. No, I will skip forward and let's see how many of these guys survive. And I'll, I'll start the video before uh, they grow into adult fry and we can see if we get some hybrids. Okay, the moment of truth. So we have this one about to pop, and then this one about to pop, and what did we get? We got two regular looking guppies. <laughs> hey, well look, if it was easy, and it was going to happen first time, that would be less satisfying when we finally achieve it. So um, let's, let's hope that some of these other ones pop and we maybe get something a little bit different. Uh, for now, I'm going to put these back in the adult tank. Success. So the next one that popped, uh, we've now got an emerald guppy. So it's a the first little tweak in color away from that starting color, and now we've actually got a a couple of different colors. It actually will speed us up in our hybridization because um, if we hover over here, we can see that for this species, color mutations will occur at random, but at an increased frequency when the parents are different colors, and pattern mutations mutations will occur occasionally when the parents are different colors but they will occur frequently when the parents are different patterns so so not only have we increased the chance when we breed this one with another color or make the basic color 
we have an increased chance of getting new colors but we also have the first chance of maybe getting new patterns as well so you know a successful breeding program once you get off to a start you know it all speeds up um so i think the trick is now let me think what's the best way of doing this we want this guy to pair up so i'm going to put him in here and wait till he pairs up he's got such a lot of choice that the chance of pairing here ha huh, can't find a mate really all these guys are paired up already that surprises me ah these all bred again these all bred recently um these guys are already paired up. Ah, oh, fair enough. Well, let's let's wait till the end of the day and see if this guy will pair up. And if not, I'll skip forward and uh, we'll wait till these guys, this guy's pregnant and we've got a good chance of hopefully creating some some new... Uh, we got another regular one, unfortunately, not a an interesting one. Okay, so this knight has a mate now, so let's move 12 and 9 in here into our breeding one and... Let's wait another day until they get pregnant. Although we're going to have to obviously wait for that entire process. So I'll pause the video here and I'll jump back when these guys are about to have their baby. Okay, so we have our fry. The parents are 9 and 12, if you remember correctly. I think 12 was the, the emerald guppy. And I did a little extra trick here. So I added, I actually separated this tank from the rest of the system and added a load of filtering just for it to give it a really high water quality. And this extra water quality is, is boosting the survival chance. So we're on the last day and we've actually got a chance of maybe having three adult guppies from this one batch. So fingers crossed. Here we go. Come on, let's get at least some new colors, if not some patterns. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, don't you love it when it all works out? Okay, cool. So from the this set of eggs, we've got three here. We've got our first new pattern, which is the Cobra Guppy. Let's have a really good look at these guys. And we've got an Aqua Guppy and we've got a regular Guppy. Let's go a little bit of first person mode and have a little look at this. Um, there's our little Cobra Guppy down there. Wait, are we on? No, we're not on fast mode. That's fine. A little Cobra Guppy shaking its tail feather. And of course that will come in lots of different colors as well. And you can just imagine how many combinations you can create between all the different patterns and all the different colors. And so that just about wraps it up for this episode. And I'm so glad I was able to show you a different pattern and you can start to get a bit of an idea of how, you know, you can either do things in quite a relaxed way and not optimize quite so much. But if you want to be like a master breeder, you can go in there and you can do little tricks like I just showed you where I've, you know, I, I got a two different colored to breed together and then I maximized the survival rate. I mean, did you see the difference? Instead of just one surviving, we got three to survive. And of course, that was a much higher chance of getting the new pattern and colors because they were they were different colors to start with. Uh, and so, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do here. And I, I hope you're excited about what this all has to uh, what this holds for you guys you know it's not just uh, the guppy that's hybridizable as well you got the angelfish and the discus but i'm gonna let you guys discover those on your own and uh thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye